An assembly line of emergency meals was activated recently in the city of Bell. Valley View's Fabiola Franco tells us why. That's the sound everyone heard each time 10,000 meals were packed. Salvation Army volunteers gathered in the city of Bell to sign on and participate in a two-day, 24-hour mercy mission. The goal was to pack meals for Haitians who were left homeless after the devastating earthquake. Uh, we've been very active with hundreds of volunteers and uh, millions of meals. Uh, right now we are uh, leading and uh, providing uh, uh, organization of care for a one camp of 20,000. The Salvation Army partnered with Numana to save the starving in Haiti. So these meals hit the ground, they're protected by U.S. soldiers, and they're delivered safely into the hands of the people, sometimes within a matter of 250,000 meals in a matter of four or five hours. More than 1,000 volunteers like these are here to pack one million meals containing rice, soy protein and dried vegetables for Haiti on the two-month anniversary of the earthquake. I, I didn't know the scope of it, but it's really great to see everybody out here and help it out. I feel like they're doing their part for a good cause. The meals from this Million Meals for Haiti event will be flown directly to Haiti within the 48 hours of packing. The meals will be arriving a week and a half after they are shipped out. This is a first event of its kind in the West. What's special about these meals is they're super nutritious. They have 21 vitamins and minerals, soy protein, rice, everything they need for a balanced meal, which is really important right now in Haiti. Volunteers showed up to this event to help make a difference in Haiti, one million meals at a time. In the city of Bell, this is Fabula Franco reporting for Valley View News. The overabundance of chihuahuas is becoming quite a problem for California shelters. Many critics are blaming the media for giving people a false impression of the breed. But to some, they are the best dogs in the world. Valley View's Brittany Silverstein has more on the problem. Many chihuahuas, like this one, are crying to be taken home. Chihuahuas are the most popular breed of dog in Los Angeles, but they are also the most abandoned. Chihuahuas make up 30% or more of the dog populations at many California shelters. And experts say Hollywood is to blame. Brad Jashinsky, a Chihuahua owner, says Chihuahuas are not like their characters in the media. It needs to be fed, it needs to be loved, it needs to be groomed, it needs to be taken care of. You know, you can't just bring it around, put it in a purse. You know, I know Paris Hilton does that, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm sure that she probably has a butler or someone actually feeds it. Movies like Legally Blonde give Chihuahuas friendly caricatures, even labeling them as a fashion accessory. But this woman says chihuahuas are not as nice as they appear. Oh, they're hard to train. They pee on your furniture. They pee all over your house. They, I mean, you have to buy new furniture and everything. And some of them are aggressive. Others say they may be a little work to train, but they are worth it in the end. At night, she crawls up right here. And she goes, so before she goes to sleep, she goes, uh, and it's like, this, I've never had a dog love me so much in my life. The overabundance of chihuahuas in the state has caused some shelters to take drastic measures. Many shelters that were built for bigger dogs had to remodel to accommodate for the little dogs. Shelters are urging potential adopters to consider chihuahuas. Animal care technician Oliver Gillan says adopting a chihuahua is a much better investment for both your wallet and your well-being. You're getting a dog that we know a lot of history about them, even though they may be they might be stray. A lot of them do come in as an owner surrender. So we'll ask the people they bring in these animals a lot about the dog. From 2008 to 2009, about a thousand more Chihuahuas were brought to LA County shelters, bringing the grand total to about 7,800. Here at the West Valley Animal Shelter, these Chihuahuas are just looking for a home. In Chatsworth, I'm Brittany Silverstein reporting for Valley View News. Since January, a record number of sick pelicans have come through a San Pedro nonprofit bird rescue center. The numbers are dropping, but the center is still struggling with decreased services and funds. Valley View's Rachel DeLeon has the story. Sick brown pelicans came by the dozens on some days. When a few of them didn't even survive the journey from the beach to the rescue center, workers began to investigate. Regional manager Paul Kelway says he's still not sure why these pelicans were found in such bad shape, but he knows of three factors working against them. Lack of food, bad weather, and contaminated water. People were just finding them all over the place, either um, severely debilitated 
or in many cases already dead. During the middle of January, the San Pedro Oiled Bird Care and Education Center was taking in 20 birds a day. In the span of two months, the center had seen over 400 birds when normally they would get that many in a year. Staff member Erica Lander says the numbers were so staggering that the center came close to taking drastic measures. And we did almost, almost get to the point where we had to close down because we were so overwhelmed. Lander says finding enough room to shelter 200 pelicans during the rains was a challenge, but soon another problem presented itself. During the height of the crisis in January, the center was going through 400 pounds of sardines a day. The center had spent about $11,000 on the pelicans this year. The center is operated by a nonprofit organization that relies mostly on foundation grants, state funding, and oil spill reimbursement. Kelway says the crisis was comparable to the damage of an oil spill, but there's no responsible party to present the bill to. He says it will be difficult to come up with the money needed for the rest of the year and has started utilizing fundraisers instead. The center held an emergency fill the bill fundraiser at the G2 Art Gallery two months after the influx of pelicans. Gallery co-owner Dan Gottlieb says he and his wife decided to hold the event after rescuing a pelican themselves and touring the facility. I must say both she and I were very impressed by the by just quality, the cleanliness, the care that people took of these animals. With or without fundraising, Kelway says his job is to make sure the pelicans are cared for and released healthy and ready for the wild. The average length of a stay of a pelican is about seven to 10 days. Before they're released, their blood work, body weight, and waterproofing needs to be checked. But even still, volunteers and workers won't release them until they're 100% sure that they'll survive in the wild. The number of sick pelicans coming in has waned since the height of the influx. The center still has 80 left to rehabilitate, and workers say they expect to go back to their normal intake numbers soon. In San Pedro, I'm Rachel DeLeon for Valley View News. Coming up, Tiger Woods speaks out about his infidelity and in coming back to golf. And now, Alan Carter with the latest in sports news. Well, Tiger Woods says he's returning to the PGA Tour after four months away from the Lynx. The world's greatest golfer admitted to cheating on his wife with a number of other women. Now, for the first time since that scandal broke, the golf icon is talking to reporters. ESPN's Tom Rinaldi was one of two reporters who interviewed Woods. A lot has transpired in my life. Um, a lot of ugly things have, have happened. Um, things that uh, I've done some pretty bad things in my life and uh, all came to a head. But now, after treatment, going for inpatient treatment for 45 days and in more outpatient treatment. Um, I'm getting back to my old roots. What's been the low point? Oh, I've had a lot of low points. Just when I think I didn't think I could get lower, it got lower. Um, An example? Whether I was in treatment, out of treatment, uh, before I went in. I mean, there were so many different low points. Um, people I had to talk and face, like, like my wife, like my mom. Um, what was that moment like? Either one. They both have been brutal. They both have been very tough because I, I've hurt them the most. I'm those are the, the, the two people in my life who I'm. I ask this question respectfully, but of course at a distance from your family life. When you look at it now, why did you get married? Why? Because I loved her. I, I loved Elon with, with everything I have. And there were a lot of people that uh, thought I was a different person. Woods also granted an interview with the Golf Channel. He's scheduled to return to professional golf at the Masters in Augusta.